Welcome back to another segment of the Digital Forensic Series. In this segment, we'll look at another MBR analysis. This is another Bootmaster Boot Record analysis. This is number three. Um, a few reasons that we may want to perform an, an MBR analysis are so that we can verify how many partitions there are on the disk, verify the attributes of the partitions and other um, information that may aid in the forensic analysis. Um, that way, from there, we can ask ourselves uh, certain questions like are there any abnormalities with the MBR, or are there any hidden partitions or um, areas where we can't see with the normal file system. And, you know, um, there could be information hidden anywhere on the disk. And just by getting inform information, we can analyze the forensic uh, disk a lot better. So just keep in mind, um, MBRs can only have four partitions and it will end in a magic number of uh, 55 AA. So we'll use our snipping tool to crop out where I think the information is, just from the ending of 55 AA, just a few lines up. Um, and also remember that we are the template that we're using is 16 bytes per row. Two hexadecimal digits represent one byte, so 0 to F is 16, and as you can see, it has 0 to F, which makes it very easy. We can just uh, drag this, we can kind of um, use this as an overlay on top of the um, on top of the information over here and carve out information that way. So I'm going to highlight 55A, so I can see that this partition is entirely empty. The fourth one, the third one is entirely empty as well. The second one has information. It's got a boot indicator and it's also got a system ID, which identifies the type of partition it may be, or if if that um, if the partition is bootable or not. Whereas partition number three and four did not have any of that information. So just for visibility so as you can see I've deleted the highlighting of the last two partitions and we can only see the first and the second partition so we'll use that information so using this column over here is the boot indicator I'm just going to highlight that for both partitions and then we are going to extract four bits of info four pieces of information so we're going to extract the boot indicator the system ID the relative sectors and the total sectors um, this is the boot ID Oh, sorry, the uh, system ID, that's the boot ID there, boot indicator, this is system ID to find out the type of partition. And this is the starting LBA address for both partitions. And this is the, the size information of partition 1 and then partition 2. Quickly going to fill in this chart over here. So boot indicator for first one, and again, when you're writing in hexadecimal, you want to start off with a 0x and then write the number. And 0x12, so 0, 0 is a partition 1. Partition 2, 0x00, 0, 0, 0, 0, And then when you're writing more than one byte of information. When you're extracting more than one byte of information from M MBR, remember that our systems read it a lot differently than what we do. Our systems will read this in Little Indian. And sorry, the systems will read it as it is. We have to read it in Little Indian. So Little Indian's a little bit more different than the traditional left to right reading. So we have to read from right to left, but then left to right in each um, column of the two two byte uh, two digits of the hexadecimal value representing one byte. So if we have a four byte array, we read the byte array from left to right, oh sorry, right to left, but then within each byte you read from left to right, the normal traditional way of reading English from left to right, but then in the entire array you will read from right to left. So I'll, I'll write the first one in, see if you can pick it up. 0x, zero, 0, 0. So I'm writing the starting LB address. I start from 0x because it's a hex number. 0x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3f. 
Cool. I'll write the other one now, which is the size. 0, 0, A, 0, 5, 0, C, F. Now I'm quickly going to fill in the second partition information. So it's 0x80, zero 0x70, uh, zero 0x70, oh, zero 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 zero, A051, zero 0e, zero zero 0x, forgot to put the 0x zero on this information, 0x, zero 0b, zero 04bd33. Zero three three. So I'm just going to double check everything. 0, 0, 12. And with the zeros that are starting off the digit, you can remove those because it actually doesn't change the value. Just like in normal maths, if there's any zeros before the number, it doesn't quite change the value. But any zeros after the number, give it another additional units, tens or hundreds, thousands, depending on um, uh, where the place value is. So we'll just remove the zeros. So I'm just going to double check again. 3F A050 CF B04 BD33 A0 51 0E A050 CF. Perfect. So now I'll start writing this out in full form. So we know that 0, 0 is in the boot indicator of the field, 0, 0 is non-bootable, non-bootable, and the system ID 0x10 is not in our common partition values, but again, I've got all the tabs open here, so I'm going to find 10, so Apparently it found five values of the ten. Just trying to see if it is. No, it's not 10, it's 12. I knew I had made a mistake. So it was 0x012. Zero zero I read it wrong. 0x012. Zero zero oh, there you go. So 0x012 zero zero in the system ID values is the EISA partition or an OEM partition. Partition. And 3F in the hexadecimal value is 63. So the um, starting LB address is at the 63rd cluster. And then the size. multiplied by, oh, again, so we are going to presume that this particular MBR is formatted in 512 byte sectors just for the um, the learning of the video. Now, the bytes per sector can be anything. It depends on what you format it with, like whatever the available options are when you are formatting the drive. In our case, the drive was formatted with 512 byte sectors so that all our calculations and everything goes correct. But this is just another example. When we use, this is just a how we're analyzing the MBR. When we're actually looking at a live MBR, you're going to have to find out how many bytes per sector that particular drive is. So that way, when you do your calculations, you get all the information about the partitions correct and the size correct and the starting LBA address. Otherwise, you'll be starting at a inappropriate location whereas you should be starting at the correct location to be able to see any results or files otherwise you'll just see um it won't make any sense and the file will just be corrupt even after carving it out or something like that so times 512 i'm going to use the google bytes to gigabytes converter and that's about 5.38 gigabytes it's roughly cool. So, 
a050 cf perfect now i'm going to start the second partition and we know that 0x80 in the boot indicator field is bootable and 07 is listed just over here it's a ntfs hpfs or an xfat type of partition and then the starting LBA is that that cluster yeah, but I'm just writing it out in decimal and B zero B zero four B D three three yep. So it's about ninety four point sixty five gigabytes roughly. Ninety four point sixty five GB. BD33. Perfect. So that will conclude the MBR analysis for this MBR number three. Um, I know I've done a total of two already. Um, this is the third one. This is just for familiarizing ourselves. Um, if you've watched the first two and you've understood it entirely, that's completely fine. But just remember a few additions that I haven't included in the first two videos where the fact that um, an MBR could be partitioned into different bytes per sector and that depends on the disk and that depends on what the purpose of the disk was. So you need to find that out uh, using the MMLS command if you're running on the Ubuntu Sleuth Kit or if you have some sort of other um, tools that you are using to forensically analyze this disk then you need that tool should be able to identify what um, bytes per cluster that is um, i hope you enjoyed this video like and subscribe to this channel for more um, videos such as this one and if you have any questions uh, comment and we'll see if either i or the community can help you out um, understanding a bit more about these I hope this helped someone and I will leave all the links to the helpful tabs that I've used in the description below and also included a completed and incompleted form of this Word document so that way um, you, can, you can attempt to do this yourself and see how easy it can be. Thank you for watching.